What's up guys, Navi and Sans here with a new sick intro and a new exciting episode of Learn How to Head Stuff. Today we're gonna take your face and put it on someone else's body. <laughs> I just had to do a very similar effect for a friend of mine, so I figured, hey, why not spread the wealth? You guys can learn something, I can teach you something. We're gonna be exporting it to an animated GIF so you can text it to your friends, post it on Twitter, it'll be a whole lot of fun. We're gonna be doing it all in After Effects, so open up Adobe After Effects. For those of you that are commenting in the video, even though in the thumbnail it says After Effects, and I say After Effects a lot, and you're still asking what editing program it is, it's After Effects. Open up After Effects, because we're getting started. All right, After Effects is open, and of course, you've saved your project, because that's the most important step. Let's move on. Inside of my project, I have the video that I want to apply my face to, and a photo of my face. Those are the only two things that you'll need to get started. First things first, take your video and drag it down to this New Composition button down here, and it will automatically create a new composition based on the dimensions of the video. Then what you're gonna wanna do is actually come to the video, where you want it to start, find the start point. So for this, we're just gonna get him dancing right here. I'm gonna pull over this uh, little left blue thing. I don't know what to call it, a work area, left work area. Take your left work area and just drag it over to where your uh, timeline marker is. And then you're gonna find the end of the video where you want it to end, which for me is right about here. And we're gonna take the other side, the right work area, and we're gonna trim it over this way. Then we're gonna right click in this gray area here and we are going to trim comp to work area. And basically what that will do is it will set your composition to just the length of the video that you want. You're gonna come up here to your tracker. And if you guys don't have this, I recommend going up to window workspace, all panels, and it will give you all of this stuff over here on the right hand side. You're gonna come to your tracker and you're gonna click on track motion and then it will bring you over into this other window. We're gonna just make this outside box a little bit bigger and the inside box a little bit bigger and we're gonna put it over our kid's face. Now, you're gonna to wanna to be at the very beginning of your composition for this because we are going to track forward once you guys have set your bounding box around your subject. So basically, it's constantly gonna look inside this square for what you're tracking and then if it ever bleeds, this is what the outside square is. The bigger your outside square, the longer the tracking process will take. So I just like to keep it pretty simple and go not too much bigger around the outside. And then we're gonna click this little play button over here which is analyze forward and it's gonna analyze our video and hopefully track this pretty well. All right, looked like a pretty clean track to me. It'll give you all these like weird squiggly lines. That's actually your tracking data. So now what we're gonna do is come up to layer new null object and just drop that down in the timeline. We're gonna relabel this tracker and then we're gonna click on our video. We're gonna come up here to edit target. You're gonna wanna make sure that it's set to your null object. If these are the only two things in your composition, this will automatically default, but check it anyway. You always gotta double check in After Effects. It can get kind of tricky. Click OK, and then we're gonna come over here to apply, and we're gonna apply the X and Y dimensions to that tracking data, click OK. And now if you click on your layer and you hit U, all these tracking points are down here. If you hit U on your null object, all the position tracking data is there, and we are looking good so far. Next step is to drop the photo in on the timeline right on top of your tracker, whoa! Scale that down a little bit, right about there. And then what I'm gonna do is just grab my pen tool, and I'm gonna zoom in here, and I'm just gonna create a mask around the outside of my face. All right, there we go. Look at that ugly mug. A face only a mother could love. So now we're gonna take my head and I'm actually gonna center the anchor point because this is something that just tilts me even though we might not use it. I'm gonna center it with my face by hitting Y on the keyboard and then dragging the little like crosshair thing to the center because if you ever rotated this, you're gonna want it to rotate from the center and if your anchor point is over here somewhere, it will rotate around the outside of the anchor point. So just make sure that you guys are putting it in the center of whatever you're doing. And we're gonna bring it over here and I'm gonna shrink it down to like, uh, I don't know, 10 scale. Yeah, it looks about right. And then I'm just gonna position this over the kid's head. Now he has a hat on, which makes it a little bit more difficult, but that's okay. We're just gonna put it right over here. We'll do the big head effect. That's looking pretty good there. And then what I'm gonna do is take this, this little squiggly line thing, I'm gonna take that and just parent it to the tracking data. And now when I play this, my head is going to follow the face because that's what we tracked before. Nice, looking pretty good. So now what I'm gonna do is actually come in here and add just a little bit more animation. So see how he kind of slides over to the left? I want my head to rotate to the right when he does that slide. So right here, we'll set a rotation keyframe. And as he slides over, I'm just gonna rotate my head just like that to the right. And then when he pops back up, we'll put it back at zero here, you know, keep rotating it. You can add just some extra animation that won't follow the tracking data. So you have to go in and do this after the fact, but it actually makes it a little bit better. So maybe at the beginning, we'll uh, we'll add another rotation. So maybe we'll just cock the head over to the side like that and then bring it back up to zero here. Something like that. 
<laughs> nice. All right, cool. So what we're going to want to do next is actually click on our face layer because I took this with a higher definition camera than what this video was shot in. It's 2018, people. If you're going to shoot your kid dancing in a dance studio and you have an iPhone, I, I'm not going to get into it. All right, so we're going to take this photo and we're going to come up to Effect, Blur, and Sharpen, and I'm going to apply a Gaussian Blur to it. I'm going to blur it about 30% just so that it actually blends in a little bit more with the crappy looking video. So it's not as obvious that we did this. Obviously people will know that it's not the real thing, but you want it to still look environmental. And, oh, just, just blur it, make it look like the video. All right, so now that we've got that going for us. Uh, we can either call this done, or if you wanted to add some like text or something down here on the front of this, we can do that quite easily. So what I'm gonna do, is click on my video and I'm gonna come up to, instead of track motion, I'm gonna click track camera. And what it will do is it will analyze the video in the background and give us 3D camera data for the video. Now, the longer your video is, the longer this process will take. The crappier your computer is, the longer this process will take. If you wanna go through and you wanna give it 110%, I would say do it, it's solving the camera. It's already done, it's already done while I was talking. So basically what you're gonna to wanna to do is kinda of come down here and find a point on the ground where it actually looks like it's laying flat. Uh, this one over here actually looks pretty good. So what I'll do is I'm actually going to click on that and I'm gonna right click and go to create solid and camera. It will create a 3D camera in my composition and also a solid layer on the ground. Uh, if your solid isn't showing up, that must mean it's really teeny tiny down there, which is totally fine. We don't need it to be visible in the composition. So then right now we're gonna create some text all right, so now that we've got this text, we're gonna click on our solid and hit P on the keyboard, which will bring up the position data. We're gonna copy that. We're gonna make this Friday text 3D by clicking on this little cube. And then we're going to hit P on this and we're going to paste the position data and it will paste it where we made our solid. And then we're gonna to have to scale this bad boy up because it uh, made it really small for some reason. So I'm holding down shift on the keyboard to scale a lot more. And I'm also holding down shift to move this on the X axis, just like that. If you guys wanted to add a drop shadow or do anything like that, you can. But uh, since this will just be an internet GIF, uh, I'm just gonna leave it, leave it be. Looking pretty good. Uh, I think we can blur this text as well. So come up here to uh, effects and go to blur and sharpen. Basically just match it with the rest of the video. And then you've got yourself a nice little GIF. Now, in order to get this out into GIF format, I have a little plugin called GIF Gun. And this thing is awesome. It's a one click GIF maker out of After Effects. It does cost $29. I do recommend it. It's a very simple tool. All you have to do is click a button. It automatically exports a GIF for you. You can set the dimensions and all that stuff. So it's tremendously easy to get a GIF out of After Effects for $29. But if you want to do it for free, here's how you do it. We're going to come up to File, Export, Add to Render Queue. And we're just going to render this as a uh, QuickTime movie. We're going to do RGB format options. We're going to come down here and we're going to go DNX HR and we're going to do uh, 10 bit here and click OK. Click OK here. Tell it where you want it to save and hit render. Then what you're going to want to do is open up Adobe Premiere. Now we got to go into Premiere because you didn't pay $29, but it's OK. We're going to get through it. Import that video into Premiere. Once it's imported into Premiere, take that and drag it onto the new item button down here. It will automatically create a composition down here for you. And you don't have to do anything else other than hit Control M. And over here under Format, you're gonna select Animated GIF and you're gonna match the source, which is totally fine. You're gonna output it to wherever you want. So we'll do KidVid GIF, save. Uh, quality 100, uh, it's gonna do the source resolution of your thing. And then make sure that you guys uncheck this box that says frame rate one. And we're actually gonna switch this to like 20. You guys can do 12 and a half, which actually will make it look a little bit crappier. Let's try 12 and a half. All the rest of these options you can totally leave. And all you gotta do is click export and it will export the animated GIF out of Premiere. There it is, KidVid GIF. And uh, it did a nice little job. There you go. And it will automatically set to loop indefinitely so you guys don't ever have to worry about that. And then you guys can send this in a text message, post it on Twitter, wherever gifts are accepted. Congratulations, you've just done something funny and I helped. I'm gonna take a little bit of credit, but you take most of the credit. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel and also check out the last video that you missed. We do them here weekly at Learn How to Edit Stuff. If you're not following me on Twitter or Instagram, at Naughty and Sands, come uh, send me a tweet. If you make a funny gift, send it to me on Twitter. I will reply, I will, I, I swear I will. Subscribe, check out the last video, and I'll I'll see you next week.